Good afternoon. Please join me in the singing of the national anthem, which will be sung by members of the Georgia Tech Glee Club. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, good evening. You know, this past spring, we had the president here at Georgia Tech, and the way he greeted the students was to come on stage and say, hello, Yellow Jackets. I want to thank the Georgia Tech Glee Club, which is one of more than 400 student organizations that offers our students a way to use their talents and develop their leadership skills while enriching their student experience here at Georgia Tech. I hope that many of you will explore the student life opportunities as you begin your college career. Georgia Tech is an institution that's steeped in tradition. Your undergraduate Student Government President Jennifer Abrams will give you an overview of some of those traditions in a few minutes. One of those traditions, as many of you have already noticed, is to hand out our rat caps at convocation. This year marks the 100th year anniversary of students wearing rat caps at convocation, so if you haven't reached in your bag to get your rat cap out, reach in, get it out, and put it on. Now, the tradition used to be that students had to wear the rat caps until we played the University of Georgia. And Jen Abrams will explain a little bit more about that later on. To all of the parents and other guests who've joined us here today, we extend a special welcome and look forward to having you back on campus many times, whether for family weekend, sporting events, or just to visit with your students. I would also like to extend a special welcome and thanks to our student leaders here today. Members of FACET, Freshman Experience PLs, Rec Club members, the Student Government Association, the Student Alumni Association and Student Ambassadors, and of course, the Georgia Tech Band. We could not do this program and we would not be the institution we are today without your leadership. At this time, I'd like to introduce several members of the stage party, and we'll ask them to stand as I call their names. So this is your first big test. Please hold your applause until I've introduced them all. Dr. Colin Potts, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education in the Mace Bearer. Dr. Susan Cousins, Vice Provost for Graduate Education and Faculty Development. Mr. Barrett Carson, Vice President for Development. Dr. Archie Irvin, Vice President for Institute Diversity. Mr. John Stein, Vice President for Student Life. Ms. Lynn Durham, Assistant Vice President and Chief of Staff to the President. Dr. Paul Cohn, Vice 
Vice Provost for Enrollment Services, Dr. Steven Gerardo, Assistant Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, Ms. Jennifer Harazi, Assistant Provost for Administration, Dr. Zvi Galil, Dean of the College of Computing, Dr. John Tone, Associate Dean, Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts, Dr. Stephen French, Dean of the College of Architecture, Dr. Jonathan Clark, Associate Dean of the Scheller College of Business, Dr. Paul Goldbart, Dean of the College of Sciences, Dr. Gary May, Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Joe Bankoff, Professor of the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts, Dr. Diana Hicks, Professor of the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts. These are the folks that are here to help ensure that you will have a successful experience at Georgia Tech. Over the past two decades, Georgia Tech has grown into one of the most globalized universities in the world. Georgia Tech has research and education collaborations in more than 80 countries. Students study or work or do internships in more than 70 countries. And our Georgia Tech students represent 115 countries. Surrounding us today on each side of the podium are 62 flags that represent the countries from which our freshman class comes this year. This is quite impressive, and I hope all of you will take an opportunity to get to know someone from another country. We live in a global society, and this is one of the few times in most of your lives when you'll have the opportunity and the time to interact with people from all over the world. It will be an exciting time for you and an exciting experience for them. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Rachel Steppe, a second year. And her fan club. <laughs> Rachel is a second year mechanical engineering student and will give you the sophomore welcome. Rachel. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the sophomore class, I'd like to welcome you to the Georgia Institute of Technology. I know how the students in the audience feel right now. You may be a little fearful, a little excited, and some of you may not think this speech is relevant to your upcoming experience at Tech. But today matters. I'm about to tell you the world-renowned, copyright-protected, Rachel Steppy Steps to Success. So don't just sit there, stand up, everyone, stand up right now. Yes, actually stand up, everyone, come on. <laughs> Get up, okay. Step number one is to embrace the weird and crazy. So if you see students fighting robots in the Clough Commons, or someone on your hall asks you to join in on their Quidditch match, or a random student on stage asks you to stand up, don't be alarmed and don't shut yourself off to the experience just because it's not what you expected. Georgia Tech is not your typical college. It might feel a little awkward or even intimidating your first year here, but that's how it's supposed to be. Now is the time to be challenged. So use those feelings as fuel to push yourself outside of your bubble. Also, you can sit down now. <laughs> okay, so now that we're all awake, on to the next step. Everything has an acronym here everything. Step number two is don't be surprised or worried when you can't find the MRDC or the ORGT contacts you or you still have no idea what FACET stands for. Just roll with it and ask someone who looks smart for help. That shouldn't be difficult since you are at Tech. Everyone here is here because they're the best and the brightest. If you weren't, you'd probably be at another university that prefers red and black to white and gold. Woo, Dalla, Georgia. <laughs> Step number three is to not let the environment of brilliance here intimidate you, but to also not take it for granted. Reach out to your peers for help with anything and everything. You never know who's going to be the next Jimmy Carter or Bill Gates. So even if it's not you, you could still get some invaluable help. For probably the first time in your life, you're going to be truly challenged. 
but you're not alone. Step number four is to ask for help. None of your TAs or professors are sitting in evil lair plotting ways for you to fail. They want to help, you just have to ask. Step number five is to let the past go. It's okay to still talk to your high school friends or miss your past experiences, but if you cling to how everything used to be, you're gonna miss what's going on right now. The people of the best times here are the ones who don't try to relive the past. Make new memories, meet new people, go crazy, it's college. Step six, don't go too crazy. You are here for academics first and foremost, so you need to prioritize. At one point my freshman year, I had to schedule everything to get my academic workload done, including showering. That's right, I physically did not have enough free time to shower, but I penciled it in for the good of the community. <laughs> Step number seven is to do what's in your best interest, not what sounds the best. You're an adult now, so you can do what you want. You can have ice cream for dinner, or push off all of your homework without any nagging, or maybe just skip every single class. But there is a big difference between can do and should do. There are repercussions when you only eat dessert for a week straight or try to see how long you can go without doing laundry. Step number eight is to not waste favors from Georgia Tech. Dead weeks and snow days are gifts from the Georgia Tech gods themselves. <laughs> Don't abuse them. As tempting as it may be to just cozy up in your warm little blanket cave and watch some Netflix, resist. If you can't find the willpower to study, at least sleep. You won't be getting any during finals week, so you should store up while you can. Step number nine, the last step, is to own it. If you wanna ride a unicycle to class, you ride that little one-wheeled cycle wherever your heart pleases. If you wanna run a marathon or climb an actual mountain while you're here, go for it. If you wanna write a computer program to simulate that for you, even better, if you want to 3D print an entire stormtrooper with your buddies, no one is going to stop you. You do you. Now is the time to be an individual, to be who you want to be. Your time here is short, so don't waste it on things that don't make you happy or don't push you towards who you want to become one day. Now is the time to take action. Everyone is scared but it's those who use that fear who become truly great. Georgia Tech can be terrifying. Georgia Tech can be challenging, but Georgia Tech is magnificent, and Georgia Tech will mold you. But it's up to you whether it tears you down or makes you indestructible. Thank you. Good afternoon. How is everybody? Thank you, Rachel. Always very inspiring to have our sophomores uh, give this welcoming. I am Rafael Braz. I'm the Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. That means I'm responsible for all things academic at Georgia Tech, from hiring outstanding faculty to recruiting you, the best and the brightest. Our duties don't stop once we bring you to campus, but extend well into your academic careers. We want to ensure your time at Georgia Tech is a unique period in your life that will change, motivate, and engage you in and out of the classroom. You are critically important to the future of Georgia Tech. Our main mission is to educate you, and that goes far beyond the classroom. The end goal of these few years isn't just about getting a job. You will. Education is about leadership development, nurturing a lifelong love for knowledge, taking risks, and making choices that prepare you for life after graduation. One of the Institute's values 
is integrity. Remember that. Behaving with integrity is not an option. It is an imperative. Integrity is absolute and touches academic and personal relationships. The latter includes behavior with respect to others, civility in disagreements, and there will be many, and respecting the rights of all. Georgia Tech is steadfast in its commitment to equal opportunity, respect, and equality for all, particularly as it relates to sexual and racial relationships. There are no exceptions. When faced with dilemmas of integrity, honesty, and behavior, keep in mind that while many mistakes are forgivable, others could affect your future. Unavoidably, life outcomes can be heavily determined by the choices you make today. Let me now give you a few suggestions to make your journey through Georgia Tech smooth and enjoyable. Work hard, very hard. Manage your time and seek help when needed, and I really mean that. Rachel addressed that already. Reach out to your instructors in difficult times, but equally in good times. Get to know your professors and show them a student who is committed to learning. Use curricular and co-curricular opportunities to expand your way of thinking. Ask questions, get answers, and then ask some more questions. Take advantage of opportunities to enrich your educational experience, like Georgia Tech's new Serve, Learn, Sustain plan. Beginning in 2016, the plan is a coordinated effort that immerses students in learning opportunities where they work on sustainably focused problems drawn from the community, businesses, and government. Please participate. Explore all that Georgia Tech and Atlanta have to offer, but also consider studying abroad or an abroad or international experience. You're entering Georgia Tech at a time of great momentum. Serial entrepreneur and Georgia Tech alum, Tom Noonan, recently stated the following. The next 25 years, will see more than five times the scientific and engineering discoveries of the last 25 years. If that is the case, then we will look to those in 2014 as 1890 looks to us. Scary, very scary, but exciting at the same time. Those exciting times that are coming are your time. Make them memorable for the generations that will follow. In doing so, you may follow the advice of Dyer, Gregersen, and Christiansen in their book, The Innovator DNA. They talk about four behavioral, be behavioral skills. The first is questioning. Never, never take anything as dogma or for granted. Ask why as many times as it's needed. Second is observing. Look around and learn from all what others are doing, particularly from other fields and areas. Cross-pollination of ideas is very, very important. Third is networking. Listen to what others think. Purposely meet people that are different and think differently, even if it makes you uncomfortable. Force is experimenting. Try new things and do not be afraid to fail. Failure is success in the sense that it shows you or others what does not work. Those four behavioral skills feed a fifth cognitive skill, as associational thinking. 
cross fields, expand horizons, and learn from people that might, might look different on the surface. This is what leads to creativity, discovery, and a better life for all. You are the privileged few who have the intelligence, discipline, and drive to attend one of the best universities in the world. We are counting on you. We are proud to have you here, very, very proud. We are here for you and want you to succeed, and I have no doubt that you will. Congratulations. At this time, let me go back and introduce Mary Elizabeth Herdon, Chair of the Honor Advisory Council. Go Jackets. Good afternoon. About a year ago, you began your journey that led you to Georgia Tech. And on behalf of the Honor Advisory Council, I congratulate you on all of your accomplishments that have led to being at this amazing institute. It is my hope that in the next few years, you have a rich collegiate experience full of new adventures and opportunities. In all likelihood, you chose Tech because it has one of the top programs and a field that you plan to pursue. Georgia Tech has attained its high reputation through outstanding faculty, demanding curriculum, exceptional students, superior facilities, and accomplished alumni. These are the qualities that probably led you to come here and pursue degrees in one of our rigorous disciplines. But no matter how superb these elements are, they would become meaningless without the keystone of the Institute, integrity. Without the highest ethical standards, successes are hollow and reputations are tarnished forever. As many of you learned through FACET, while honor and integrity have always been an integral part of Tech's history, the honor code that we use today was established through a student initiative in 1995. I believe it is important to remember that the code was created to protect all members of the community and create high expectations of each other. The honor code serves to ensure the rights of every individual are valued and that each student can pursue their education on a level playing field. However, the protection afforded by the honor code is reliant upon the efforts of the entire community. It is everyday actions of students and faculty that can either build up or tear down our reputation of excellence and high ethical standards. For tech to remain a top institution, integrity must be maintained. We, as students, must recognize our responsibility as part of this essential team that makes Georgia Tech a great place to be and to learn. To demonstrate our commitment to this responsibility, I ask you all to rise and repeat the honor challenge after me. I commit to uphold the ideals of honor and integrity by refusing to betray the trust bestowed upon me as a member of the Georgia Tech community. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Elizabeth. You know, many of you that are here today as new Georgia Tech freshmen think you're here because of the tremendous academic track record that you've had. But many of us on the stage believe that you're here because of the potential that you hold within yourselves. For the seventh consecutive fall semester, Georgia Tech's incoming freshman class has been the best qualified and one of the most diverse in the Institute's history. This freshman class consists of 41% women. I'm not sure who's happier about that, the men or the women. <laughs> One in five of you are legacies, which means that you have a relative that attended Georgia, Georgia Tech. And more and more, we're beginning to hear our students say, my mother went to Georgia Tech, and we're proud of that trend. It's appropriate that your first assembly 
at Georgia Tech be held here in the McCamish Pavilion. You will no doubt return here several times during your academic career. But none will be as memorable as the time you walk across this stage in just a few short years to accept your diploma. Your parents, your friends, and others with you today. In fact, all of us are here on the stage and we're looking forward to the time when you graduate. Between now and then, it's important that you think carefully about what it is that you want to accomplish at Georgia Tech during your short time here. What is it that you want to do besides just get a degree? Do you want to be in student government, in the band, in the glee club, on the debate team, in intercollegiate athletics? Tonight when you lay down, think about that because time flies and it goes by quickly. So give some thought to what it is that you hope to accomplish during your short time here at Georgia Tech. Let's look ahead to what statistics might show about you as a member of the class of 2019 or 2020 or, well that's enough, um, <laughs> depending upon whether you change majors or not. In six years, more than 85% of you will have graduated from Tech and you'll have an average salary in excess of $70,000 a year. I'm not, I'm not sure if that was for the graduation or the salary, but I'll take both. 90% of those actively looking for a job will be employed shortly upon graduation from Tech. What makes a difference? You have a greater chance of graduating if you participate in a co-op or internship program, if you study abroad, if you live on campus, if you show up for class, uh, if you participate in GT1000 and the freshman experience. Because students that are involved at Georgia Tech succeed at Georgia Tech. So get involved. Get involved in one of the more than 400 student organizations. Go to the CRC. Go to the Counseling Center. Join a fraternity or a sorority. Join a student organization, but get involved. Upon graduation, 21% of you will go on to graduate programs right after your graduation. And an additional 39% plan to attend graduate school at some point in the future, just not immediately. 7% will go to law school or medical school. And 17% will go on to get a PhD. 58% of you will graduate in the same major in which you started. And I'm sure you can do the math because that means that 42% of you will change majors at least once, and that's okay. If statistics hold, 96% of you will successfully complete your freshman year and return as sophomores. 49% will take a foreign language even though it's not required. 46% will participate in our undergraduate research opportunity program, and 48% will participate in an international experience through internship or study abroad. 41% will participate in a professional practice program such as Georgia Tech's cooperative education program or an internship or both. And 26% will go on to work with a co-op or internship employer with whom you worked during your undergraduate experience. We've had our co-op program for more than a century and it's the largest voluntary co-op program in the country. 79% will graduate in a science, technology, engineering, or math, or so-called STEM field. 61% will graduate from the largest and one of the best engineering programs in the nation. And 6% will be double majors. When we check with you through our baccalaureate alumni survey in just a few years, 97% will be employed, 96% will recommend Georgia Tech to a friend or relative, 93% will actually admit that their advanced math courses, such as calculus, help prepare them for their jobs. And 92% would choose Georgia Tech all over again. But the truth is, you're not a statistic. You're an individual with tremendous potential. And our job is to partner with you and your parents and your support group 
to make sure that you reach your fullest potential. During your years at Georgia Tech, you'll learn to think critically, solve problems, work in teams, and develop innovative solutions to some of the world's most pressing problems. You'll make friends from all over the world, many of whom will last a lifetime, and you'll do things you never thought or imagined could be possible. Because here at Georgia Tech, we're creating the next, the next big idea, the next new technology, and the next group of innovators and entrepreneurs. We're partnering on campus and around the world with business, industry, and other universities, and in the U.S. government agencies to develop solutions to some of society's most pressing problems. You will be part of the next. In the days and weeks ahead, remember you're part of a community, and there are many people and organizations that are here and committed to help you succeed. We have faculty, staff, and administrators, and your fellow students who are prepared to partner with you and who are invested in your future and invested in your success. So don't hesitate to ask for advice or guidance or help when you need it, because that's why we're here. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you undergraduate student body president, Jennifer Abrams. Thank you, President Peterson. Congratulations, you made it. We have been welcoming you for months, and now tomorrow is your first official day as a Yellow Jacket. I gave you some advice at Facet, but I figured I could whip out a few more tips for convocation, you know, with all the great wisdom I have. First tip, learn to do your laundry, or at least the directions to the nearest laundromat. Second, never underestimate your ability to sleep through your morning classes even if that morning class is at 11 a.m. There is value in an alarm clock. Finally, call your mother or your father or your aunt or your uncle or a significant person who aided in you becoming who you are today. You will never be too old to need them. Welcome. You're a Yellow Jacket now and among the best and brightest minds not only in the country but in the world. What a great opportunity you have in front of you. Always remember, to whom much is given, much is expected. As you begin your first day of your Georgia Tech life tomorrow, you will see that the Institute expects a lot of us. Tech challenges us, pushes us, and gives us the tools to grow. I distinctly remember my convocation and vaguely remember my first day. I do remember, however, that I was nervous. And whether you're nervous or excited or totally don't know what to expect, I can tell you for sure that you're ready. Take it from someone who's been doing the first day of school thing since the 90s, you've got this. I asked you at Facet what it means to be a Yellow Jacket, and remember I told you there is no one way to be a Yellow Jacket. You are part of probably the most diverse family in the world. Being a Yellow Jacket, you are also a part of a school with a very rich history of tradition. I get the great honor today of teaching you one of our favorite traditions at Tech, rat caps. All of you have a rat cap in your bag, as well as a Sharpie. In honor of the 100 year anniversary of the rat cap, In honor of the 100 year anniversary of the rat cap, Buzz personally signed 10 caps in the audience. If you'll remove those items, I will teach you how to properly fill out your rat cap. The word rat originally stood for recruit at tech and was used to describe incoming freshmen. The tradition once stood that all freshmen were required to wear their rat caps until the annual UGA football game coming in the fall semester. If we somehow managed to lose to UGA, freshmen were required to wear their rat cap for the rest of the school year. While this requirement has gone away, the rat cap still serves as an important symbol of your connection to the Institute, its oldest tradition, and our united rivalry with that school to the north. So here's how you do it. In the center of the upturned brim, you'll write the acronym RAT in big bold letters across the top. Directly above the word RAT should be the student's full name. Directly below the word RAT will be your hometown and your state. To the left of RAT should be the student's major. You can cross that out and, and change it if it changes. 
to the right of the rack, the word rat will be your expected year of graduation, and you can also cross that out when it changes too. <laughs> In the back panel, the words to hell with Georgia should be proudly displayed. The phrase should be displayed with one word on each line. To and with will be the smallest words, while hell will be larger than Georgia, and Georgia is in all lowercase letters. <laughs> For students who choose to do the co-op program, you will circle the button on the top of your cap when you finish your co-op. Throughout the season, football scores should be added to the cap with the front panel reserved for the bowl game. All wins should be displayed right side up and any losses, should they happen, be written upside down. Our team should be represented by the word tech in all capital letters and always written above the opponent as red. All markings on the cap should be done with a black Sharpie. I'll encourage you to take a moment to write your names on the brim of your cap. I hope that you all will finish your rat caps and keep them updated as the football season goes on. I wish you the best of luck on your first day of school tomorrow. Congratulations and welcome to Georgia Tech. Thank you, Jen. Just in case you couldn't keep up with all of that, there are some directions in the T-book, which is also in your bag that can help you uh, understand, has the directions for filling out your rat cap. While Jennifer was speaking, I got a text from George P. Burdell. He had hoped to stop by and say hello, but he's been detained for some other important business. You'll see, or at least hear, a lot about Mr. Burdell throughout your time here at Georgia Tech. You know, one of the privileges of my job is to represent Georgia Tech in the community, throughout the state, the nation, and at times the world. We have more than 145,000 proud Georgia Tech alum around the world. And there's a special sense of pride and an instant connection when they see each other. Oftentimes, Tech alums will recognize each other, not by the rat cap, but by a Georgia Tech ball cap, shirt, or gear, or perhaps by a Georgia Tech pin. As a new Georgia Tech freshman experience tradition, the housing department has provided you with a pin in your bag. Please find it and put it on. Just as your rat cap is a symbol that you've joined a very elite freshman class, the Georgia Tech pin is a symbol of the commitment you've made to Georgia Tech and to your future. Wear it proudly, and in a few years from now, when you walk across this stage to receive a diploma from one of the finest universities in the world, we'll add a rambling wreck pin to your collection. In closing, I'd like to remind all of our students that they're invited to the rock, ramble, and roll party in the student center immediately following the ceremony. At this time, members of the Georgia Tech Glee Club will lead us in the alma mater, followed immediately by the faculty recessional. The graduates and audience are requested to stand and remain standing as the platform party recesses, and then I invite all of you to join in the singing of the country's best known fight song, Rambling Wreck. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Congratulations and welcome to Georgia Tech. Oh! 
memory of the days gone by. O Zion of the Southland, in our hearts you shall forever fly. Ramble. 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 Ramble.